Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today we're going to teach you the most important abdominal exercise there is for spondylolisthesis. Hope you enjoy. So there are a lot of you out there trying to do abdominal exercises to help with spondylolisthesis. The idea behind of training the abs is that it will somehow create more of a flexion component and decrease the arch in the lower back, which many times is accentuated. Spondylolisthesis typically is aggravated when we have too much of an arch in the lower back because as that vertebra slips forward, the posterior aspects of the spine, such as the facet joints, the back of the facet joint capsules, synovium gets entrapped and gets pinched, the sacroiliac joints become irritated, and even the disc fibers in the back of the disc become compressed. So abdominal training, the thinking behind it, is to increase the ab tension and strength, which is going to help to flex the body forward and help to decrease that extension or backwards aggravating pressure on spondylolisthesis. Unfortunately, most of the abdominal training is erred because most people doing abs are focusing on bringing the rib cage down. And that includes crunches, traditional sit-ups, planks where you're crunching down, uh, stir the pot exercises where you're crunching hard. And most people are not emphasizing the actual tailbone under, which is the more important part of abdominal training. If you take your hand in your lower back and place it on the bottom of your lower back, where most people have their spondylo, L5, S1, L4, 5, and you crunch down with the ribs, you're going to notice there's a little motion of those vertebras moving back into your fingers, but not a lot. However, if you tilt your tailbone under and raise your pubic bone up, you're going to notice that there's much more of a backwards movement into your finger from the spine. That's where the abdominals need to target the corrective exercise and the posture correction. Many people with spondylos suffer from an anterior tilted pelvis, meaning their pubic bone is lower than their tailbone. And you'll see that. Their belt, their pants, the front of it will be lower than the back. By doing flexion work with the torso coming forward with a lot of abdominal exercises, what you're doing is you're shortening the fascia, which is the interconnecting webbing that runs from our neck muscles all the way down through our sternalis, our abdominals, into our pelvis, and continues on to our hip flexor, like the rectus femoris muscles, all the way to our feet. By crunching down, you're continuously shortening that, and you're lengthening or weakening the fascial structures and muscles on the back side of the body. And what happens is as we crunch forward, many times the head will jut forward in extension. And it turns out that when we have an extension posture in the neck, once we return to a normal position, it many times accentuates an extension posture of the low back. The low back curve and the neck curve face the same way. As we increase one, the other is generally increased. So a lot of these abdominal exercises really aren't targeting what you want, which is the posterior pelvic tilt. Enter the most important exercise for spondylolisthesis for ab training, which is the straight-legged curl up. As we lay face down with the legs straight, which right now you notice there's a difference between this and a lot of what you're doing out there. A lot of people are using knees bent for spondylolisthesis training because it decreases the arch in the back. However, when you're doing that and doing a nice curl up or crunch up or full sit up, we're really not emphasizing that tail under posture. With having the legs straight, your legs are acting like long levers that actually want to tilt the pelvis down or create that pubic bone moving down and tail up you need to work against that or counter that physical challenge by tucking the tailbone under and raising that pubic bone up. And you'll feel your abdominals working with that. And then what we do is we finish off with a very slight sit up from the ribs, but look at how slight that is. That's probably less than a half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch of motion. 90% of my effort is going into tucking the tailbone under, pubic bone up, resisting the gravitational force of the long levers of the legs acting on the pelvis, and 10% of my effort is sitting up from my ribcage. You'll notice that I have my head in a good stable position, protecting it from using the usual head forward motion. I'm looking past my cheekbones towards my collarbone that locks my head into a stable position, tailbone under 90% of my effort, 10% raising up. Very short motion, but very important for training the abs to undo the deleterious effects of anterior pelvic tilt posture. 
I also want to make sure as I'm doing that, I'm keeping my body in good alignment. Most of us with spondylolisthesis have many issues, including one hip that goes higher, a tendency to lean a rib cage to one side, twisting of a rib cage or pelvis, a leg that turns out that creates hip hiking, weak multifidus muscles. All of these problems relate to how you're using your abdominal muscles when you crunch. Your abdominals need to be developed in a symmetrical way to hold your posture so that spondylolisthesis segment isn't stressed by asymmetrical forces. If I have a tendency to lean to one side while I drive, when I work, and my tendency and posture is to drop that rib cage down or hike that hip up, I can rest assured that when I'm doing abdominal training, the same thing is going to happen. So knowing what your unique mechanical and posture issues are is paramount to doing any exercise so you're not strengthening the dysfunctional way that your body moves, which would compress the spondylolisthesis joint and disc on one side and overstress it on another, but to learn how to correct your body so that you're in a neutral, symmetrical position and you're training your musculoskeletal system to hold you in a symmetrical way. If you haven't done yet, I invite you to go to either the Pain Free and Fit or Posture Size website. We have a free body analysis there. You can check out what your unique posture and mechanical issues are. If you're just doing tear sheet abdominal training and not thinking about what's going on inside your body, you're going to miss the boat. As I'm doing that straight legged curl up, I'm not only thinking about the points that I just mentioned, but I'm thinking about I have to need to hold one rib side of my rib cage up. I need to have to hold my pelvis slightly, maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch to the left, so that I'm using my abdominals, my obliques, internal and external, my rectus abdominis, the superficial six pack or eight pack muscle, my transverse abdominis. If I have a problem where the internal oblique is compensating for a dysfunctional transverse abdominis, I want to engage that correctly. So I'm getting symmetrical development to my abdominals to help hold my pelvis under, which is going to help undo the typical fascial tension of having the back side of your body fascia tight and the front side weak. It's going to help to stretch the back side, strengthen the fascial tissues such as the muscles and the fascia that surround them in the front to hold that tailbone under. That's going to support a backwards movement or pressure to help stabilize that spondylolisthesis so that as you're going through your daily activities, that bone and that segment is less likely to slide, to slide forward and less likely to irritate your spondylo. If you like this video and would like to help me share it with others, give me a thumbs up below. We have plenty of other videos on spondylolisthesis, low back pain here on the channel. I invite you to subscribe. It's just as important to learn how to train the rear muscles, the back muscles, as it is the abdominals. A lot of people with spondylo don't realize it's not just one stretch, one exercise. It's a complex of different exercises, all designed around your unique mechanics and your problem. We have a great program out there, the Pain Free and Fit Fast Track Healing Program for Spondylolisthesis that's available now on the Pain Free and Fit website. You can get that. It goes through the specific analysis, stretches, stability exercises, conditioning exercises, all targeting your spondylolisthesis to help provide you with the healing stimulus. Use these tips with your abdominal training. Stay away from emphasizing flexion with the upper part of the body, and let's get into holding your unique corrections specific for your body while emphasizing tailbone under and posterior pelvic tilting, not only with straight-legged curl-ups, but with your other abdominal exercises as well. I hope this video helps you with your spondylolisthesis abdominal training.